It's taken five years, but I think that cricket is finally not gonna bother me. Anywho, so for those who don't know, Access is an index challenge where we try to get all three, or close to all three tier 5 of the specific tower, based off of the Axis of Havoc achievement from the actual game. So, since Heli Axis is technically impossible, you get to veto one of the three tier 5s, which is why it's still considered Heli Axis even though I don't have ComCom. So, while the uh, gameplay is going on in the background, I'll just explain my choices. For the start, it's really nothing innovative. It's just two darts, two snipers, and a hero, and then try to rush, he pays heli, and afterwards it's downdraft, and so on and so forth. So it turns out, Gwen is actually really cracked with A-Prime. Gwen Drive almost follows a lane of DDTs, which means you get to let A-Prime lock in place for one side so you don't have to do any funky micro especially with the move speed of an A prime and the move speed of DDT's without a sabo. Gwen also provides specific damage bonuses to lead boons which are DDT's which provides a total of two lead damage. For the Apache prime alone it won allows the red lasers to hit the uh, DDTs, but more importantly too, it adds around 50 DDT DPS to the plasma machine gun, which... Yeah, it doesn't take a mathematician to tell you that 50 damage on something with base 400 health is a lot of damage. And again, Gwen plus Overdrive with that stupendous plus 2 lead damage is really close to soloing a lane, so all it needs is a little marine support to handle the bottom right side of round 95. But we're getting a bit too ahead of ourselves. Looking at the dark ship save up now, it's honestly one of the most fun I've had in a run in a long time. It's a perfect mix of Managing abilities and actually microing towers. Especially with all three helis and two of them definitely needing to be microed. It was a lot of fun trying to figure out which side I need to put my Moab shove on, whether I should lock in place DD or, or put it on follow touch, whether I should use Gwen's cocktail, and so on and so forth. I decided to go for a shove as a dark ship save up and a prime save up because first of all it's really good and even if I wasn't going for calm def I would still probably use shove it helps lock down one lane while while dark ship nukes the other which is really important for us map as horrendous as x fact And the early 50s is where Moab Shove absolutely shines, essentially being a Moab solo for that stage of the game, which is pretty good. Don't know why they buffed it by $500, but I ain't complaining. Moab Shove is without a doubt one of the towers I underutilize. It's always so fun and so useful. Even after the save up, its mild nugging is actually quite significant. Especially since I'm going for most leftover. Now with Dark Ship afforded, the rest of the game should be pretty easy except for round 95 and round 99. And maybe round 92. 
a combination of the main dart, the missiles, the newly buffed rotors, and X-Factor's really long RBS makes Starship extremely competent in handling the mid-game, especially when supported with Gwen and Shove. Once again, Shove's pr Shove, Shove proves its extreme... Shove... Pr Shove... This is why you use script. Once again, Shove... Sh Once again, Shove proves its value by... Doing what it does best. Locking down one side... Well, on next factor at least, which allows the rest of your defense to focus down the other, heavily easing the need of perfect micro or whatever, something that's definitely out of my skill level. So speaking through the mid game here, I do want to try to at least attempt to show as much of the mid game as possible at super speed because apparently you people like that. I, I'm i gonna be honest, I expected a completely different pole resort, but democracy wins in the end, I guess. And as demonstrated, and of course with the newly buffed firestorm, round 76 is no issue, round 77 is a breeze, took a couple of attempts, but at the end of the day, round 77 was taken care of. And round 78 is gonna be a breeze, right? God, Firestorm is still horrendous. So yeah, I didn't expect to actually need to micro my dark ship. My dark ship for round 78 after using Firestorm because... Like, come on, it's literally named Firestorm. How can it not pop a few ceramic balloons? Oh well. Round 79 was a bit tricky. It just needed a little fiddling with ability timings and such, but at the end of the day, I managed to get it done, and... My reward for all of that? Prime before round 81. Let's go. Afterwards, it should be pretty straightforward. Just get Marine and Overdrive, and then a little bit extra to beat TDTs. As... Of course, I'm also gonna try to aim for as high of a leftover as possible. Because... It's just in our nature, duh. So, a little thing with uh, A-Prime on x fact For heavy rounds such as 81 and 82, the better way to play it is to knock down one side and then chip away at the other if it gets too close for comfort and then go back to the original side you were targeting and blitz it to no end. And for the nimbler rounds such as 83 and 84, you should... you could put it in the middle of both lanes while being next to the tunnel because it sort of lets it target both lanes without needing you to micro. And I hate micro. God, I hate playing the game. Imagine actually being interactive. What a nerd. So anyways, we finally arrived around 92, which... I'm gonna be honest, I expected to have much more money than this. But no, I can't even afford Marine at this point, so my hand was forced and I needed to get Brew Drive before getting Marine. The original plan was to get two Overdrives, but I ended up messing up my placement, so an Overdrive can't be in a good spot while also receiving both Drums and Radar, so... Whoopsies, but it all worked out in the end because Brew is cheaper than OD, and I managed to beat the run anyways, meaning I got 20k left over, which I wouldn't have gotten if the crickets are back, god damn it. 
this is by far the worst part about recording during night time. Holy hell. Again. Come on. It's 92. So my hand was forced into a brood drive. Into a brood drive. Round 95. Oh my god, the tri Stupid crickets are back. You know what? Fuck this. Alright, the next few rounds are a bit trivial. Especially since we actually have some defense on the bottom side now. And so we're just gonna flash forward a bit until we reach 95. Now that I actually have Marine, round 95 just took a little bit of, well not RNG per se, but every round is randomly different due to pixel measurements that a normal human can't calculate, so it's essentially RNG. I just rng my way through round 95, and that's it. And once again, Brew Drive plus Gwen just shows how powerful that combo is for a recycled mid-game save-up, or just a late-game just DDT destroyer in general. You know, mid-game save-up and DDT destroyer, that's... One hell of a resume. And then round 96 was done either first try or the first few tries. I don't remember, but either way, extremely free with A Prime. A Prime is so incredible against dense rounds, it's honestly quite insane. It kills things in like basically zero RBS, so you get to actually focus one lane at a time with it. Then afterwards, we have the 4 or 5 DMG round of round 97. We also had Shove. What a round. Alright, so round 98. With how A Prime works, it was extremely trivial. Just solo the bottom side and then solo the top side. Done. That's it. Nothing fancy. Round 89, however, God, that took over an hour of what to me felt like pure RNG. This round was so painful because, and this round honestly fueled my hate for Marine. This thing is a $50,000 tower that is meant for cleanup. Yet while under heated up, it can't goddamn clean up heavily damaged FDDTs. Yeah, not a good look there. I'm gonna be honest, I actually preferred the main heli attack over Marine, which should not be a case for a forty-four thousand dollar upgrade to its predecessor predecessor, but Well, I guess that's not the worst thing NK has uh, ever balanced. But yeah, this round was extremely difficult. I just took so long to try to find the one, one, the correct pattern, two, the correct placements, and three, not mess up a very obvious thing that you can choke. And of course, round 100 is free, and I even got to, you know, going for this, which was nice. Round 100 is of course free with A Prime on X Rock RPS. And boom. We didn't get any supports, just Brew Drive as DPS and the starting towers and drums and radar. That's all. Quite an efficient run. Anyways, hey, you've made it to the end. Congratulations. If you want to see something else similar, similar to this, then I've done runs crazier than this, like Superstorm and Ravine Chimps. Go check it out.